Hi, in this video I'm gonna pick up the baton and show you a demonstration of what it means to connect to the external domain in the context of multi-site orchestrator. So what I'll show you in this demo is a couple of simple but interesting things. Uh, the first is I'm going to import an existing layer 3 out that's living in my ACI fabrics into an MSO schema. Uh, this is a case where I've got an independent layer 3 out in each of my two sites. And the use case I'm going to focus on here is really north-south traffic uh, via some physical ASA firewalls. Then what I'll do is I'll apply that layer 3 out after I import it to our tenant BDs and set up all the contracts, etc. And I'll do all of that in MSO. And the use case here that I'll highlight is uh, carrying forward is each site will be accessing unique external resources only available in that site. I'll also quickly show you what it looks like when I enable the host routing function. Then what I'll do is I'll go on to build what we call an intersite L3 out. And in this case, uh, we'll show that an endpoint in one site is now able to access external resources either locally or unique external resources via the other site and vice versa. And really quickly, this should be quite familiar to you. This is the lab setup that I'm using for all of my demonstrations. The only thing I want to point out here is between the video before this and this video, I've actually upgraded my ACI fabric to ACI 5.02 in each of my sites, and I've upgraded my MSO cluster to version 3.0.2, and there are a couple of changes that we'll show you in the subsequent videos about what that brings to the table. So let's quickly go over what I've got going on in my demo topology and my desired outcome. So you should be familiar with our tenant Brown that we've been using in all of the videos up until this point. It's got a, a VRF that is stretched across both of my sites. If we take a look at site Amsterdam, we've got a unique and local bridge domain, BDAMS, and we've got a couple of EPGs. All of that lives specifically and only in the Amsterdam site. If we look at Barcelona, site number two, you see we've got the same sort of thing where we've got a local bridge domain and a couple of EPGs that live only and locally in site Barcelona. What I'm going to do then is I'm going to import an existing layer 3 out that's configured in APIC. I'm going to import that into MSO. So we've got a layer 3 out, uh, what I'll call West. And I've got an external EPG called INET West that represents the local resources that are available to site AMS. And you can see we've got a layer 3 out to a device called ASA West at some given IPs. That ASA is advertising the following route, 000 slash 1, so it's half of the IPv4 routing table. These are resources that are only available through the layer 3 out in site Amsterdam. At the same time, I'll also import a second and unique layer 3 out that lives in site Barcelona with the same kind of setup to a different firewall called ASA East. And this particular firewall will be advertising the, the route 128.0.0 slash 1, the other half of the IPv4 routing table. It will be advertising that back to the Barcelona site. So that represents the resources that are uniquely available only through the layer 3 out inside Barcelona. With that being said, let's actually get on to showing you what this looks like in my fabric. Okay, let me quickly uh, show you what I've got going on just as a refresher. Uh, so I'm looking at the APIC that is managing Site 1 Amsterdam. And you can see down here that I already have configured, uh, not shown in the video, a, a layer 3 out called ASA INET West. And I've got an external EPG called INET West. And you can see in that external EPG here that the uh, subnets that I've allowed through that layer 3 out is 000 slash 1 or half the IPv4 routing table in my particular example. You'll also remember that I've got my clients and servers AMS and my bridge domains and all of those things. Now, I haven't actually attached this layer 3 out anywhere. I've just deployed the basic layer 3 out objects. Uh, I'll go and do the rest through MSO. But there is one thing I wanted to point out here before I get to MSO. Is I'm uh, As I said, I upgraded my, my fabric to ACI 5.0.2 and my MSO to version 3.0.2. And you'll notice here that at this moment in time, well, you don't know it, but I'll tell you that um, you know clients AMS can talk to servers in Barcelona and vice versa through a, a local you know 
contract. And we showed that in a prior video. Now, normally, if that were the case, you would see what we call shadow objects. So I wanted to show you a small change uh, in ACI uh, 5.0.2 and, and where you can go and, and verify that. So up in the upper right corner, if you click on the little icon that sort of looks like a, a user's profile inside a monitor, there's a, an area called settings. And here in this settings, there's a new setting that shows up in ACI 5.0.2, and that says show hidden policies. And it is normally off or unchecked by default. And the result of that being off means we will no longer show you shadow objects in, in, the, in the ACI UI. Now, that's not to say they don't exist. They still exist. ACI is aware of them. MSO is aware of them. But for ease of the administrator not to get confused by what's a shadow object, what's not a shadow object, we simply hide them. And if you if you do want to see the shadow objects, because that's your preference, you can, of course, enable that, that box and you're back to the old behavior of showing shadow objects through the UI. Okay, so here we are uh, already logged in to my multi-site orchestrator. And, and what you see here is my schema called Brownfield. Now, if you watch the other videos, you should be very familiar with it because nothing has really changed. We have our Brownfield set up where we've got tenant Brown and we've already deployed uh, some bridge domains and some EPGs, etc. Uh, just like I showed you in the slides at the beginning of this video. So just to, a quick reminder, as you can see here, I've got uh, in the common items, so things that exist in both sites, is I created a contract. Uh, uh, I created a, a VRF named V1 uh, and a filter, really just kind of basic stuff that already exists across both sites. In Amsterdam, I've got a couple of EPGs. Uh, I've already pre-created a contract for us that I'm going to be using when I set up the connection to the Layer 3 out in this particular site, in site Amsterdam, which is also called West. Uh, and then, of course, we've got our bridge domains uh, with our subnets and all of the same uh, information that you should already be familiar with. And the same thing holds true for Barcelona, so I'm not going to show that. What I do want to do here is I want to actually import the existing layer three out that uh, that lives in Amsterdam first, uh, and I'll I'll do the same for Barcelona, but I won't show it because it's exactly the same steps. So here in the uh, template called AMS. Uh, I'm going to click on the import function. This, again, should be familiar to you because we've done this before, so I'll go uh, fairly fast. So I'll click on importing things from Amsterdam, and I'll look at the list of things I want to import, and I'll see, well, I want to actually bring in the external EPG. That's something interesting. Uh, and you'll notice that uh, it's got a VRF and a layer 3 out uh, already uh, related. Um, because the VRF already exists, I don't want to get an error when I try to import it again by mistake, so I'm going to go ahead and, and turn off that uh, include relations for the moment. I'll fix it later in MSO, but but for now we don't want to double import the VRF because it, it already exists. Uh, so the second thing I want to bring in is the layer three out itself. So I'll go ahead and click it and turn off the relationship there. And it's as easy as that and I'll just go ahead and click import. Um, now uh, there's a couple of things that we need to complete uh, in MSO because you can see we've got some red lines around some objects which means uh, some sort of user input is required so if, uh, if I click onto the external EPG of course we need to attach it to the VRF that already existed that I didn't need to import twice uh, and then of course the layer 3 out also needs to be attached to the VRF uh, that should all be common sense and then you'll notice here under the site specific settings for this template there's a red dot so that again there's one more step we need to complete here and that's to go into the external EPG and again attach it to the layer 3 out that we just imported locally that lives inside AMS called ASA INET West and, and it's really just that easy so I'll go ahead and save that uh, and of course now we need to deploy it to sites just like we do when we make changes uh, to any schema or template and clicking on deploying in sites again a familiar site we get to see what's actually going to happen in Amsterdam a few objects will be created i.e. multi-site orchestrator will be taking ownership of those objects and we click deploy and everything uh, is successfully working. Now I'm going to go ahead and just fast forward and do the same thing for Barcelona. I'm not going to show it but I just wanted you to know that I've done it already for Barcelona as well. Okay, now that we have both of our independent layer 3 outs, each inside Amsterdam and Barcelona, independently imported into their respective templates, let's actually go ahead and associate and attach this layer 3 out so we can actually make use of it and show that traffic will be uh, passing only for those resources that are uniquely available across each of those layer 3 outs. 
So I'm going to click back into Amsterdam uh, and let's see here. I'm going to take the EPG called Clients AMS and I'm going to attach a contract. Now I had already had these contracts built ahead of time. They're very simple contracts. They just basically allow everything. Uh, so I'm going to attach the contract called C-INET-WEST and, and this particular EPG will be a consumer. So everything is good there. Now the other side of that contract relationship exists in the external EPG. So clicking on the external EPG, uh, you can see that I'll have to add the same contract here, uh, INET West, and this particular uh, external EPG will act as the provider. Again, standard contract relationship, nothing fancy. Now there's a, a couple more things that we need to do here, and that's actually attach this layer three out to the bridge domain uh, in uh, site AMS. So because it's a site specific resource, we actually have to go down to the site specific settings for the bridge domain here and uh, you'll notice here that we have an area to attach a layer 3 out so I'll go ahead and select uh, INET West because that's the layer 3 out that exists only in Amsterdam um, and there's a couple of more things I just want to remind you to double check uh, so that routing works is when you look at your subnets just make sure that any subnets that you desire to actually advertise have this radio button of advertised externally enabled because if you don't have it enabled then you'll never be advertising them to outside of the fabric and traffic it won't pass and you'll you might wonder what's going on so I've already already done that but I just kinda wanted to remind you to make sure that you have all of that done so I've got my layer 3 out associated got my contracts in place uh, I've got my EPGs as provider and consumer uh, I should be uh, ready to go so I'll save uh, this for Amsterdam um, and I'll go ahead and deploy to sites uh, and I'll click on deploy uh, and that will be done now again I'm gonna do the exact same thing for the unique layer 3 out in Barcelona but I'm not gonna show it in the video because it's almost identical with the exception that Barcelona has its own unique layer 3 out with its own unique resources only available to that site Okay, fast forwarding, I've completed uh, the Barcelona uh, uh, import and attachment of the layer 3 out, but really quickly I've got an EPG called BCN-Servers. I've attached a contract called INET-East as a consumer, um, and then if I look at the external EPG, I've attached that same contract as a provider. And then if we look up at the template level, if we look at that external EPG, uh, we can see here that the classification of the subnets that are allowed or unique to Barcelona is 128.00 slash 1. Uh, that's different to what we had in Amsterdam, uh, which if you remember was um, uh, 000 slash 1. So these uh, resources are unique and specific to each of their sites. And I've gone ahead and, and deployed all of that. So everything is looking good from the perspective of MSO being aware and using these layer 3 outs now. With that being said, let's actually go and take a look at the routing tables of all the devices here that are actually using this layer 3 out. Okay, let's first start by taking a look at the CLI of the firewall ASA West that lives across the layer 3 out that lives in Amsterdam only. And the first thing I did was I showed OSPF neighbor because I chose to use OSPF as the protocol on my layer 3 out. We can see its adjacency is full. That's a good sign. And then I issued a show route command in the ASA, and you can see here uh, down at the very bottom that there's a couple of subnets uh, that are being advertised uh, from the ACI fabric towards this firewall. And those subnets should be familiar to you because those are the subnets attached to the BD-AMS that lives in site AMS. Uh, so that's looking good, and we're receiving those all over OSPF. If we take a look at the ASA in Barcelona, so this is ASA East, it's a different firewall, and it's the same kind of thing, neighbor adjacency is full, and we can see that I'm from the Barcelona layer 3 out, I'm receiving a single route over OSPF uh, of the bridge domain subnet for the bridge domain that lives exclusively in site Barcelona. So everything is looking good so far. If we take a quick look at the leaf in site number one, does so this the leaf in Amsterdam uh, that's that's handling the other side of this layer three out I did um, a show uh, IP route for VRF tenant Brown and VRF v1 so if we look at the routing table we can actually see uh, an interesting entry here that I want to call out is we are receiving a route 000 slash uh, one you know, from the adjacency to the uh, ASA firewall and its OSPF default type 2 so this is the firewall in Amsterdam advertising that route towards OSPF so that my local BD 
uh, and endpoints can actually get out to at least that half of the IPv4 routing table. If we take a quick look at the routing table of the LEAF in site Barcelona that's hosting its unique and independent layer 3 out, again, I showed IP, uh, same, same command show IP route VRF brown colon v1 and you can see here something interesting is it's receiving that same kind of route but it's a different route 128 000 slash one that's receiving from the firewall asa east that is a unique resource to the site in barcelona so everything is looking good so i think at this point it would be a good idea to actually test and see can endpoints in site amsterdam access the locally available resources across its local layer three out and can the the endpoints in barcelona do the very same thing and more importantly prove that an endpoint inside amsterdam cannot access layer three out resources that live at this moment in barcelona at least not yet that will come but i want to just show you how it works in the classic sense Okay, here we are in the console of an endpoint in Site 1 and a console in the endpoint uh, in Site 2. So this, uh, this particular Windows uh, device at 192.168.1.11 lives in Site Amsterdam uh, and should be able to access local resources through its local layer 3 out. And remember, that's the first half of the IPv4 subnet. So I'm just going to go ahead and, and ping uh, Google's uh, DNS server just to see if, in fact, uh, this is working. And we can see here, just as expected, the, the layer 3 out resources uh, are in fact reachable uh, through this layer 3 out. If we take a look at the console, this is an, uh, a Unix or Linux box. Uh, this is uh, a device that or an endpoint that lives only in Site 2 in Barcelona. Uh, and you can see that its address is 192.168.3.100. Can it ping the very same Google DNS uh, address? And of course, if we hit enter, we see that it in fact fails. Now that is expected because remember, Barcelona currently cannot access resources that are locally specific to the layer three out that lives inside Amsterdam. However, if we try to ping a different address that's in the upper half of the IPv4 range in my particular example, we, we should expect the traffic to work. And in fact, it is able to ping an address in the range that is locally available and specific to site Amsterdam. If we go back to the console of the device inside Amsterdam and we try to ping that very same address, we will see that it does in fact fail. And again, that's expected because Amsterdam cannot yet reach resources that are only available through the layer three out in Barcelona. Okay, let's take a minute here and talk about host routes and show you how you would enable host routes in MSO. So my goal here is uh, I'm in my uh, schema called Brownfield. I would like to turn on host routing for any of the subnets in the bridge domain bd-ams. So you can see here, I'm down in the site level settings uh, for the Amsterdam site. So let's go and find our bridge domain here. And if we click on the bridge domain and we look at the configuration settings on the right, there is a box there that is unchecked by default that says host route. And if I simply tick the box uh, to enable host routing for this given bridge domain in this given site, I should then start to see slash 32 host routes advertised in the layer three out inside Amsterdam. Now it's important that I point out that it really only makes sense to enable host routing when you have a stretched bridge domain across both sites. Now in my example, I don't have that, but I just at least wanted to take a moment to show you how you would enable host routes in that given situation. So here I'll simply deploy that to my site and at this point we can go and check the routing table of the firewall ASA West and see if host routing shows up. So now if we go back to the firewall hosting that layer 3 out inside Amsterdam and we look at the routing table again, uh, we can actually see um, there is the addition of a slash 32 host route for the endpoint that Windows device at 1.11 and that's exactly what you should see if you enable uh, host routes is a slash 32 for every endpoint that is allowed to use this layer three out. Okay, now I wanna finish up by showing you the use case of intersite layer three outs, whereby any endpoint in any site could access any resources, whether locally specific or across uh, resources uh, coming from a different site's layer three out. So everybody can talk to everything in the entire IPv4 range in my particular example. So you would think logically you would go into uh, MSO and um, maybe it's as easy as just attaching the layer three out that exists in Barcelona 
to the bridge domain that lives in Amsterdam. So let's go ahead and look at the bridge domain for Amsterdam and let's go ahead and try to associate the other layer three out. So this is the layer three out that lives in Barcelona, but I'm attaching it to a bridge domain in Amsterdam. Uh, and we'll do the same thing for Barcelona. Uh, we've got the bridge domain there. We'll go ahead and attach the uh, INET West. Again, this is the layer three out that lives in Amsterdam, but being attached to a bridge domain in Barcelona. And we'll go ahead and save that configuration. And we'll deploy that to our sites uh, just to make sure everything is in operation on our ACI fabrics. Um, everything is looking good so far. So you would think at this point, well, you know, I should just be able to, to reach uh, everything right now. And that is, in fact, incorrect. There is something else that we need to do, and I'll show you that in a second. But first, of course, you probably already picked up on the fact that I made a small mistake as well because I didn't attach the contracts for the EPGs in the sites to use the layer three out in the op opposing site. So let's do that really quickly. So in BCN-Servers, I'm going to go ahead and take the contract called INET West and let's go ahead and make this uh, EPG a consumer. And then we'll do the same thing in Amsterdam, whereas the EPG clients AMS will add the contract to be able to use uh, the layer three out as a consumer uh, in the BCN site. So we'll deploy that to the sites uh, for Amsterdam and we'll deploy that for Barcelona as well. Uh, and everything should be good, uh, but not quite yet. There's one more step that we need to do. I just kind of wanted to quickly uh, show you that at least at this point, even though traffic cannot flow equally from both sites to everything across the layer three outs, you'll notice that my my ASA firewalls will actually have the subnets for the opposing site. Now the contract relationship allowed that to happen, but actually traffic actually can't flow. And I can go and show you that it will in fact fail, but you might be initially confused, like hmm, the routes and the routing table, so traffic uh, should flow just fine. Now what this really means is, if traffic were initiated outside of the fabric and coming inbound over this layer three out, the traffic would actually reach the endpoint, but the return traffic would actually fail because the Barcelona side doesn't know about the 000-1 prefix being learned in Amsterdam. That's the, uh, the extra thing that we have to do to enable intersite layer three outs uh, for all of this stuff to work. Okay, so here we are back in MSO. How do I actually do intersite layer three outs? Well, it's actually quite simple. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come out of the schema and we're going to have to switch back into our infra configuration uh, for each of our sites. So if I go into configure infra, uh, this particular screen or set of views should look familiar to you. There's an additional thing that we need to enable to make sure that intersite layer three outs will in fact work and everybody can talk to everybody. So here in site Amsterdam, I'm going to click down into the pod level and there's this is the area where we need to add something. So over here on the right, you see there's a section called external tep pools. Now Max mentioned in his uh, lecture about this that this is something that's necessary for intersite layer three out to work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly add an external tep pool, a smaller tep pool, a different tep pool that is going to be used for this purpose. So in Amsterdam, I've added an external tep pool of 192.168.101.0 slash 24, and I'll go ahead and click save. And I'll do a unique one for Barcelona as well that will be a different network and something specific to Barcelona. So you can see here that I've chosen 192.168.103.0 slash 24 for the external tep pool for Barcelona. Now all I have to do here is click deploy because I've made changes to the infra. And now that is actually pushed to uh, all of the Apex in each of the sites. Before we do our final test of our endpoints and reachability, let's go back to the leafs that are hosting these layer three outs and let's have a look and see if the route table has changed now that we've enabled intersite layer three outs. So I'll go ahead and issue the same command, show IP route VRF Brown V1, and we can look at the routing table and we can see a couple of things here. Well, we can see uh, our original uh, prefix being received by our local ASA West, uh, but we can also see another prefix down here 128 and we can see that its next hop is not to an interface like the the other route, but its next hop is to an IP address 
103.225. Well, what is that address? Well, this is an address that MSO pulled from the external tech pool that I just enabled uh, in Barcelona. And it's basically telling Amsterdam, hey, listen, if you want to reach this particular subnet, I'm advertising reachability to you through an intersite layer three out, and here's your next hop. And that next hop is simply the TEP associated to the border leaf node out of the routable TEP pool. The same thing holds true if we look at the leaf hosting the layer three out uh, in Barcelona. We'll issue the same command. And we can see here, we've got our local route to a physical interface pointing to ASA East. But we've also got here at the top, this uh, 000 slash one, which is the resource being advertised through Amsterdam. Uh, and it's pointing to an address 192.168. 101.225. Again, that's an IP address out of the external tech pool that belongs to Amsterdam. And it's simply Amsterdam advertising to Barcelona. Hey, if you need to reach this subnet, here's your next hop through me. Now for our final test, let's go back to our endpoints and let's just make sure that they can ping the full IP v4 address range because intersite layer three out is now in effect. So the test uh, in the EP that lives in Amsterdam, this Windows device, let's see if it can ping uh, that server, uh, whereas before it failed, in this particular case, it is now working. So it can ping uh, everything that it needs to across the entire routing segment. And if we look at the endpoint uh, in uh, in Barcelona, uh, and we say, can I ping the, the Google DNS server 8.8.8.8, .8 and you can see in this particular case, it is now working, whereas before intersite layer three outs, this was failing. So that concludes this demonstration video on accessing the external domain through multi-site orchestrator. On to the next video and back to Max. Thank you very much. <laughs>